us he neared Gethsemane he became strangely silent he had often visited this place for prayer and meditation but never with a heart so full of grief as upon this night of his last agony now he is to be counted amongst transgressors the guilt of fallen humanity he now must bear he that knew no sin upon him is to be laid the iniquity of us all so dreadful was the sight of sin before him so grave the weight of guilt which he was to bear that he is tempted to fear it would shut him out of the presence of the father forever but what was to be gained by the sacrifice he thought the teachers of the law had rejected him one of his most trusted disciples would betray him one of his most faithful disciples would deny him all would forsake him Jesus he wondered at why all of humanity would unite in the plots of Satan against him the conflict was terrible and as he contemplated the price to be paid for human soul in his agony he clings to the cold ground as if to prevent himself from being farther from the father the cold chilling deer of the night falls upon his prostrate form and from his pale lips comes the bitter cry <laughs> If it be possible, let this cup pass me by. Yet even now he adds, No, no, but your will, Lord, he Thrice, thrice he uttered this prayer, and thrice his humanity shrunk at the reality of this last crown and sacrifice the powers of good and evil long to hear God's answer to Christ thrice repeated prayer the angels from the heaven long to bring relief to the divine sufferer but this might not be for as the mysterious cup of death trembled in the hands of the master <laughs> behold heavens open and the angels came down but not to take the cup away from the master's hands but to strengthen it to drink it and then cometh Judas where is he? where is he? with an evil passionate kiss he betrays the master for two days he was without food or drink he had faced the agony of Gethsemane the anguish of betrayal the denial of Peter he had been taken from Annas to Caiaphas, from Caiaphas to Pilate, from Pilate to Herod, and from Herod back to Pilate. Jesus, the Son of the living God. And as he passed through the gates of Pilate's court, the cross, the cross that had been prepared for Barabbas the thief, was placed upon his innocent, bruised and bleeding shoulders 
Some time ago, his disciples, I honor to be associated with the master. But now, in shame and humiliation, the follow from a distance. From the same lips that came the cries of praise, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, came the wicked cry. Crucify him! Crucify him! As he made his way up Gautas Hill. See, at the baptism and transfiguration, the voice of God had been heard from the heaven, proclaiming him as his beloved son with whom he was very well pleased but now as he was brutally nailed on the cross when the voice was needed the most his beloved father was silent <laughs> if you be the king of the Jews then save yourself! Later did they know that it was because he refused to save himself that the whole of the world is saved today. The sun, the sun refused to shine upon this awful scene of death. Amid the thick darkness, God's presence was hidden. But no more. He cried out. Oh. Oh. My God. My God. Why has thou forsaken me? See, those that had a little hope on him, when they heard this despairing cry, hope left them. Because if God had forsaken the one who claimed to be his son, then upon what could they possibly hope on? The spotless son of God hung on the cross. His body designed with stripes those hands of his that so often reach out with a healing touch nailed to the wooden bars those legs of his that moved so tirelessly in ministries of love spiked to the tree that royal head of his pierced with a crown of thorns. that mouth of his shaped in a cry of woe and in hush tones yet seemed to resound for all of the earth to hear he said it is finished apparently forsaken of God His disciples watched in utter despair as he was being brought down from the cross. His hair matted with blood. His eyes short. His hands folded on his breast. And his lips simmered forever silent. They watched as he was being laid in a borrowed tomb. He that owned the whole of the world. A heavy stone was rolled against the entrance of the tomb. And a guard of a hundred soldiers kept to protect the tomb. Permit me to say, 
he was very dead. But why didn't the Jews and rulers of Israel know the Son of God? For at his best, the stars had known him. And God, the wise men to the manger where he did lay. The wind and seas had known him and held their peace at his command. Demons and diseases had known him and trembled at his word. The rocks had known him and shivered into fragments when he cried out, It is finished. All of nature had known him, yet the Jews and the rulers of Israel knew not the Son of God. Are we any different? But that's not how the story ends. <laughs> For three days later, and the Sunday morning, behold, there was a mighty earthquake. For the angel of the Lord had descended from the heavens. His countenance was a lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. For fear of him, the gods did shake and became as dead men. Brave soldiers that had never been afraid of anything taken captive with neither sod nor spear for the face upon which they looked today was not the face of a mortal warrior but the face of the captain of the Lord's own end and they watched as they rolled away the heavy stone as one would kick away a tiny little pebble and out of the grave Jesus came up proclaiming over the sun oh God where is thy sin? Oh grace, where is thy victory? By living of me in the volume of the books, thou shalt not leave my soul in Hades, neither shall you live the Son of Man to rot in hell. For even in the grave, he is loved. He died, but he's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. The tongue of God days into glorious days the stars into stars he's alive he's alive my redeemer leave us my redeemer leave us.